From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Minman and welcome to another CUBE Conversation. I'm here in our Boston area studio. And of course, uh, the intersection of networking and security has always been a hot topic. Uh, even more, uh, if you look at it in 2020, uh, everybody working from home, there, there's, there's stresses and strains and a lot more changes than usual uh, for what corporate IT has to deal with. Uh, happy to welcome to the program uh, Tom Biankowski. Uh, he is the Director of Product Marketing with NetScout. We're gonna get into some of those topics and more. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome, Sue. Glad to be here. Our all right, uh, so you came to, to NetScout by way of the Arbor Networks uh, acquisition uh, a few years ago. Uh, why, don't, why don't you give our, our audience just a little bit about your background, uh, what, what your team works on, and uh, we're going to be talking about the, the edge defense uh, solution set. Sure, yes. I, I've been with Arbor Networks for over 10 years. Um, I've been the director of product marketing uh, for the DDoS line of products uh, during that time. And when we came over to NetScout, I still have kind of continued that role. So I'm basically responsible for anything uh, that's, you know, to do with the Arbor DDoS solutions. We have solutions for the service providers of the world and large enterprises of the world. Yeah, maybe to, to, it would help if you just refresh our audience. So, you know, generally out in the marketplace, you know, DDoS, it's, you know, attacks on the internet. If, I'm, if I was, you know, a big uh, provider of technology, it's like, hey, why can't I get to, to that website? Oh, they, they had a DDoS attack that hit them. But, you know, when it, when it comes to the enterprise, uh, you, you talked about, about service providers also, you know, when is this hitting them? You know, who are uh, the, the ones causing this kind of thing? It just kind of give our audience a little bit of a level set, if you would, in 2020. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, you know, DDoS attacks have been around for over 20 years. This isn't anything new, as as you know. Um, but the reality is, is as, as that these attacks have been getting bigger, they're getting more frequent, they're getting more complex. Um, and like I said before, I've been here for over 10 years, and I feel like I say that every single year. But it is absolutely true. Um, and you know, the service providers of the world bear the brunt of of this this problem. They're the ones taking on these large attacks. They're the ones trying to stop it, not only to protect their own infrastructure, but also uh, potentially the target, which could or could not be one of their customers. So there's a lot of collateral damage associated with a DDoS attack, especially from a service provider's perspective, because it impacts everything running on their backbone or in their you know, whatever facility that this attack is flowing through. And then obviously you have potentially the target of these attacks, which could be any enterprise, any large government, whatever. It's very indiscriminate. Uh, anyone could be a potential target, uh, and, and they are. All right, and, and for, for the enterprises themselves, uh, you know, how are they making sure that they are protecting their perimeter? Um, where, 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 where does NetScout uh, you know, fit into helping protect them against the, this sort of malicious attack? Yeah, so when, when it comes to protecting your perimeter in particular, let's let's talk about where we are today in this whole COVID-19 pandemic. Um, as we all know, we, this this caused a massive work slash, uh, you know, learn from home scenarios um, never seen before. And, you know, the quote new perimeter is everyone who was once inside the organization now home coming back in, right? And, you know, the, 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 the internet inbound internet circuit, the uh, firewall, the VPN gateway, the load maps are all now coming from an opposite direction that maybe they, we were utilized in the past um, uh, is really the new perimeter. And it is, has become very crucial to maintain business continuity, especially in this time. But as we'll talk about, it also has become very vulnerable to, to DDoS attacks in particular. And, uh, you know, one of the areas that uh, we'll, we'll talk about is, is how one particular piece of that infrastructure, the VPN gateway, has actually become not only one of the most critical pieces in that chain of communication, but also one of the most vulnerable pieces, too, simply because it was never anticipated that this many users would, would utilize that VPN gateway. Right? It was never designed for that. Uh, and therefore, it's running at you know high or near capacity or at capacity, and it and it could be toppled over pretty easily with uh, fairly small DDoS attacks. We'll get into that a little bit later. 
Yeah, absolutely, Tom. So I've had so many conversations over the last few months about you know the the, the ripple effects of what work from home, um, or you know if we think about however things uh, play out in the next few months, uh, it really will be almost work from anywhere um, is is what will happen. Um, and while everyone is working at home, that doesn't mean uh, that some of those bad actors out there uh, have gone away. In fact, uh, we, you know every company I talk to that's involved with security has seen uh, you know we we need. To to raise our uh, capabilities and often are getting more uh, attacks out there. Uh, what, what have you been seeing out there in the marketplace? You know, how, how have things been so far in 2020 when it when it comes to uh, your, your space? Yeah, no, same thing. So um, I'm going to put up a chart here, and this is a chart which shows uh, DDoS attacks during the first um, of six months of 2020. And this data comes from uh, what we call our cyber threat horizon. This is, this is a free online portal that anyone could access and see this information if they wish. But it's fueled by the deployment of our products all over the world. So our, our DDoS protection products are utilized by a majority of the world's internet service providers. And uh, from that deployment, they send this information about DDoS attack activity, like you know the, the size of the attack, who, who it's being attacked, Who's being attacked? Where is it coming from? The protocols or vectors being used, et cetera. So we, we gather this information on a daily basis presented in this portal. So what this represents is the first six months of 2020. And as you can see, there's been over 4.8 million attacks thus far in, in 2020. That's about 15% higher than last year at the same exact time period. But if you look at the chart a little bit closer, we snapped the line uh, at February, sort of the, the start of the global pandemic and the lockdown periods, if you will. And what you can see uh, for every March, April, May as, a, as an uptick in the number of DDoS attacks, almost up to 36% in, in May. Uh, so all this is happening during the time of this lockdown, right? All this is happening where organizations are struggling to maintain a new, a new normal, if you will, or this business continuity, right? Uh, so what you represented before, what you said before, that organizations are still struggling with cyber attacks. In fact, probably more this is exactly what's happened to in the DDoS realm. And then finally, like if you look at June, you see this little drop off there. And, you know, here everyone talking about the new normal, the new normal. Is that the new normal? Possibly. It's still too soon to tell, I think. Uh, we'll wait for another couple months here. But the bottom line is that during the midst of all this, as organizations are trying to maintain some level of business continuity, they are also being faced with cyber threats like DDoS attacks too, like they've never seen before. So, amazing challenge that that folks have faced out there. Yeah, t t Tom, there, there's a few spaces in the marketplace that were already uh, very important, uh, you know, really top of mind from the business. Uh, I think about automation and security being two of the ones that that come up the most often. And when I talk to the participants in the space, they're like, I thought I was busy in 2019 and had a lot planned for 2020. And oh my gosh, I had no idea what 2020 was really going to bring. So that, that data that you showed, you know, you're talking about, you know, millions of attacks uh, and, uh, you know, that, that increase there, uh, putting a focus on it even more here. So uh, a lot of work for people to be done. So but bring us inside it a little bit. Uh, you know, how NetScout, how are you helping customers? What advice you have for them? Uh, you know, how do we make sure that we, we can curb, uh, you know, the, the, the impact of these attacks, uh, which is said in the millions? Sure. So let's go back to that, um, that inbound infrastructure now, right? Where everyone working from home, coming into the inbound router, hitting a firewall, and but more likely hitting a VPN gateway of some sort. That's what's allowing them to get access into these internal resources. That VPN gateway, as I mentioned before, uh, has, has been crucial during this time, but it also has been very susceptible to DDoS attacks. That VPN gateways, as well as that Firewall, these are you know what was referred to as stateful devices. They have to track TCP state in order to work properly. Well, there are three types of DDoS attacks, if you will, to make things simple. One is the volumetric attack, which people normally think of as a, when a DDoS attack. It is designed to saturate that that inbound circuit, that that um, internet-facing router interface, right? Um, 
And then their application layer attacks. These are very small stealthy attacks. They're going after specific application servers. They're trying to bleed off resources there. And then there's an attack called a state exhaustion attacks. These are specifically designed to go after stateful devices like firewalls or in today's world, the VPN gateway. And it doesn't take much. It takes a small 100 megabit per second attack lasting for you know, five, 10 minutes to potentially fill the state tables in some of these VPN gateways, especially in light of the fact that they weren't prepared or designed to take on all the legitimate users right, that are coming in as a result of the pandemic. So the, the key to stopping these sorts of attacks, these stateful attacks and protecting that VPN gateway is to put uh, something on premise that is stateless, meaning it has the ability to inspect packets using stateless packet processing technology. And we have such products. Our, our product, which we call the Arbor Edge Defense, uh, is designed to stop all types of attacks. But in this in this particular environment, uh, it is uh, or excels at stopping state exhaustion attacks. And you deploy it just inside the internet router and in front of the VPN gateway or that firewall. And there, it could pick off short-lived state exhaustion attacks and protect the availability of the VPN gateway and or firewall. Now, if you're relying upon, which many organizations do, relying upon a cloud-based DDoS protection service, which we have too, we have something called Arbor Cloud, uh, it, it may not be able to stop those attacks in time. So you're running a little risk by relying on more traditional cloud-based DDoS protection services. That's why you need this product, Arbor Edge Defense, on-premise, because it will react instantaneously and protect that VPN gateway from going on and maintain that business continuity for you. Yeah, Tom, when I think about uh, that, that footprint that you have uh, in a customer's environment, uh, you know, in addition to the, the, the DDoS services, it would seem like that's uh, a prime opportunity that, that there's other services and applications uh, that could be run there. Is, 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 is that the case with, uh, with your, your solution too? Uh, well, if, if I understand what you mean by the services, well, we have the ability to um, conduct a fully managed service. Is that is that where you're going with that, Stu? Yeah, I, I, th I think think that yeah, that's it. it Want to right understand how how that service works? Yes. So, so the Arbor Edge Defense um, is a system that once you have it configured, you you design it for protecting sort of the interior services like the v protecting the VPN gateway, firewalls, any other application you have running internal. In the event of a large attack, as we've been talking, that will fill that internet pipe, it has a feature called cloud signaling, where it will intelligently call for help upstream to either an Arbor Cloud service. This is a fully managed DDoS protection service. We have you know, global scrubbing centers, uh, and or call your ISP, who may you may be getting your, your DDoS protection service from already. So it has the ability to link the on-premise with the with the cloud-based protection. And this hybrid approach to protection is absolutely the industry best practice. This is this is how you protect yourself from the multiple vector DDoS attacks, as we mentioned previously. Now, if you're an organization that maybe doesn't have enough experience, uh, doesn't want to deal with the, the on-prem uh, Arbor Edge defense, you know, we have you covered there too. We have the ability to manage that that scenario or that device for you. Uh, we have the man we have ability to manage not only the Arbor Edge Defense, but the all also integration of the Arbor Cloud. So that whole hybrid scenario that we're talking about can be fully managed by um, you know by our folks who do this every single day, twenty four seven. Yeah, uh, it, 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 any breakdown as to your customers as to you know when they choose the, that that fully managed solution versus on prem? You know, recommendation we've had for a long time is you, you want to have your IT focused on things that have differentiation in your uh, environment, and it seems like a natural thing that you know your team has the expertise. Um, so, what is that decision point as to whether they do it themselves or uh, go with a managed solution? I think it really just has to do with the culture and the experience of the company. Really, what we're seeing is some of the smaller organizations uh, that you know you have smaller teams, right? That wear multiple hats. They just cannot stay abreast of the latest threats in DDoS. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, these things are getting more and more complex. So, I think they're they're coming to the conclusion that all right, this is something that I can't do my, by myself anyway. 
for the large attacks, I need a cloud-based service provider of some sort. I need someone to help me there anyway. So why don't they just handle the whole thing? Why don't they just handle the on-premise component and the, and the cloud-based component of this and make sure that it's running as efficiently as possible? But you know, even that said, it's not just the smaller orgs. We're seeing larger orgs do it too, just to push things off their plates. Let's let's leave DDoS to the experts again because I can't do it by myself anyway. All right, T Tom. I, I saw a video. I, I I think it was you that did actually talking about how arbitrage defense is the first and last defense uh, when when it when it comes to DDoS. Maybe explain that to a little bit to our audience. Yeah. So our tagline for the product is first and last line of defense. The first line is what we've been talking about all along here is the ability to stop the inbound DDoS attacks. Now. It also acts as a last line of defense too. So as we were alluding to before, you know, all you hear during this time of the pandemic is watch out for, uh, you know, COVID-19 related ransomware and things like that, right? Um, because the Arbor Edge defense sits just inside the router and outside that firewall, it is literally the last component in that cybersecurity chain before the, let's look from the outbound perspective, packets leaving the enterprise and going out to the internet. It is the last piece of, 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 of product in that security chain, right? Before it leaves the internet. The Arbor Edge Defense has the ability to consume threat intelligence, not only from our own Atlas system, which we spoke about earlier, but third parties too. Via sticks and taxi, it has the ability to consume threat intelligence. And there, Sitting on that that last piece of um, you know the, the, the security um, pipe, if you will, or chain, it has the ability to intercept uh, indicators of compromise that have come from internal compromised devices that have made it through the entire security chain, out, go, reached outside the firewall. Now it's one last one last line of defense, if you will, that has the ability to recognize and stop that internal indicator of compromise, and this is going to help stop the proliferation of malware and ultimately avoid that data breach that everyone is, is fearful of. So it has a dual role. It could protect you from inbound DDoS attacks and it also, also can act as his last line of defense, uh, stopping the proliferation of this malware we're talking about. Great, Tom. Yeah, that, that, that actually refers, I, I was curious about, you know, what other things uh, your, your, your device did and, you know, there's the intelligence baked into there to have kind of a multi-purpose uh, when, when you're in the, that environment. All right, Tom, I want to give you the last word here. Uh, you know, companies today, uh, they often need to react, you know, very fast to be able to deal with, you know, the changing dynamics of their business, uh, you know, spinning up resources, everybody, you know, working from home and the like. So, uh, you know, what final uh, advice do you have for them? And, uh, you know, give us the final word. Yeah, you know, during this time, um, precedent times, you know, we all unfortunately still have to remain very vigilant when it comes to protecting our organizations from cyber attacks. Uh, one, of the, one of the areas that seems to get overlooked as, uh, uh, is DDoS protection, right? Uh, everyone is focused on malware and things like that, but don't overlook DDoS attacks. These things are happening on a daily basis, as I showed you, over almost 5 million so far this year. Uh, it is an absolute part of maintaining the availability of your organization. It's part of the security triad, as we know, and you know it's it's really there to um, you know to you know disrupt your business continuity if you are getting hit. So don't overlook your and don't under, underestimate your your DDoS protection. All right. Well, Tom Biankowski, thank you so much for the updates and uh, appreciate everything you shared. You're welcome. All right, be sure to check out thecube.net for lots more coverage from theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman, thanks for watching.